Hi, and thank you for watching us here at Tax Talk UK, where we talk about all things tax and also consider other important aspects of working for yourself, being self-employed, running a small business. So today I'm going to talk about how to account for finance um, in your um, Making Tax Digital software. Before I do that, if I could please ask you to take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll easily be able to refer back to this information if you should need to, as well as being able to find other information that we have available on a whole host of different topics, all aimed at supporting you and helping you to be successful in your self-employment. So back then to accounting for finance in your um, software. So the, um, the, the sort of scenario I'm thinking about is that you have um, purchased um, an asset, say a van or some equipment or machinery, um, but you've had finance um, for that. So, of course, we're always trying to keep our accounts as accurate as possible and as real time as possible, meaning that at any time we should be able to look at our profit and loss and our balance sheet and have an accurate position of, of where, where things are. So if we purchase a, um, an item, um, but we take finance for that, and we don't enter that into our software, of course, then we're not, we're not showing a true reflection of our assets and our liabilities. And of course, if you're VAT registered and the item that you're buying has VAT on it, then you're going to need to enter the um, enter the um, invoice for the asset, at least in order to be able to reclaim the VAT. But then if you just simply leave the invoice outstanding in your system, then this is going to make it hard for you to reconcile your suppliers because you're going to um, inaccurately show that you have a creditor, a trade creditor, when actually you don't, you have finance which you also will need to be accounting for interest on. So in order to do this in your um, software, whichever software you've decided to use, um, then it's quite simple. You would initially enter, a, enter the purchase invoice for the full amount of the um, asset that you've purchased. So if, for example, you have purchased a van for um, £10,000, and um, no VAT included in that, then you would simply enter that invoice into your, um, into your software, the same as any other purchase invoice. And you would categorize that to the, uh, um, to the assets. So for vehicles in the, in the instance of a, of a van. So then if you look on the supplier's account, um, the one, the supplier that you purchased the van from, you will see £10,000 outstanding. Let's say, for example, you paid £5,000 as a deposit and then you took £5,000 on finance. How would you treat this? So you would um, match the £5,000 payment that you've made to that purchase invoice in your software and then of course, in the software, the supplier account would have a £5,000 balance indicating that you still owed £5,000 to that supplier. So what we want to do is to, um, to show the finance outstanding and to show that that is all dealt with with the supplier. So we would simply raise a credit note for the supplier, but categorising it to loans or to a, to perhaps to a new um, finance category if you wanted to show the finance separately and you might may call it something really obvious like van finance. And as long as when you set that category up, um, it is set up correctly as a liability, that is absolutely fine to do. So we're entering the purchase invoice for the van. We're entering the, we're matching the um, payment for any deposit against that purchase invoice. And then we're raising a supplier credit note 
for the amount moved to finance, categorizing that credit note to finance. Now, just one thing to note, if you're VAT registered, regardless of whether that asset and that original purchase invoice has VAT on or not, when you raise the credit note to the finance category, that would be no VAT. There would be no VAT accounted for in them because it's simply a transaction to move um, to move from the supplier account to your loan. So then after you've done that, you will see that the supplier account will be clear. Your asset will show the full 10,000 for that loan in that example. And your finance, the loan would show 5,000 outstanding. Now, the important thing to do would be at the end of the um, financial period um, that you're looking at, that you have a statement from, from the finance company or from your lender to show how much interest has been charged and then you would need to make an adjustment to that category for the for the finance um, to to make sure that you're actually claiming the allowance so i hope this um i hope this has been helpful um, of course as always um you're able to journal the entries um, but a lot of people that um are, of our viewers that are watching the videos tell me that they find journals confusing and they prefer to do to, 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 to create the transactions in a way that's more understandable and more in line with, um, with the sort of day-to-day -day things that they're dealing with. So just to recap then, um, to if you've bought an asset on finance and you want to enter that into your software, um, you enter the purchase invoice for the full value of the asset, but that introduces then the asset into the um, into your accounts by categorizing that purchase invoice to the relevant asset account. Any deposit or any part payment that you've made, then you allocate that as normal to the invoice, um, to the purchase invoice that you've entered. And then the remaining balance that you've transferred to finance you would um, raise a credit note to the um, to the supplier account, categorizing it as the liability code. And then at the end of each period, you would need to remember to adjust the loan account, increasing the loan for any interest that, that has been charged. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.